Good afternoon. It's Thursday, May 27th, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Ernerberry Market Report, sponsored by Travis Meats Incorporated. This morning, foodmarket.com is reporting Russia and the United States may be close to reaching a deal to resume poultry supplies that have been halted due to Russia's ban on chlorine-treated products. Check out more on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. Now, let's set the tone. According to the report issued by the USDA, eggs processed under federal inspection, the supply of liquid whole egg decreased by 7% during the past week. That of liquid whites was essentially unchanged, and that of liquid yolk decreased by 3%. Total liquid production has increased by $1 year over year. Talking turkey, today's been a good day in terms of generating market input, and it doesn't happen often, but buyers and sellers are pretty much on the same page. Neck supplies have finally come into a closer balance, and prices have become steadier after deep discounts were found necessary to clear some burdensome stocks. Now, with an inside look at Ernerberry's poultry report released on Comtel, here's market reporter James Serpico. Thanks, Jill, and good morning, everyone. Um, Looking at our most recent poultry report, the uh, updated broiler production numbers uh, located on the first page of this report show a slight increase in the eggs set, which are up 3% this week from last year, where last week they were up only 2%, so just a slight increase uh, in those figures. And the chicks, chicks placed remain steady about 2% advanced from last year. Uh, that was the same figure from last week. Um, our poultry chart this week focuses on the very important issue of the growing inventories of frozen leg quarters. Um, for the entirety of 2010, Russia has not allowed U.S. poultry exports because of a ban concerning the use of chlorine during the slaughter and cleansing process. And as of late, processors have been forced to discount these items in order to clear these uh, excess offerings. Um, that's it for today from our poultry report. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, James. Moving over to red meats in the boxed beef market. Sellers are seen focusing on filling trucks for last-minute shipment of Memorial Day holiday feature items. And cuts in ground beef remain at steady price levels. With a seasonal look at cattle trends in the cattle market, here's market reporter Bruce Longo and Dwayne Lenz from Cattle Facts. Uh, good morning. This is uh, Bruce Longo from Erner Barry. On the phone with Dwayne Lentz uh, from Cattle Facts, who is the Director of Marketing Analyst at Cattle Facts. And this morning we're going to chat just a uh, uh, briefly about the cattle markets and just ahead of Memorial Day we've recently seen just some some slipping of of, of, of the value of the uh, of the fed cattle and Dwayne you know is this something that's typically seen this type of year what do you uh, you know what do you think spurring this uh, this little dip back in cattle prices? It is, Bruce. It's a very seasonal event that we see typically about 8 out of 10 years this time of year. The market does go lower, it's being caused by more cattle coming to the market along with coming to the end of the, the better demand time with, with Memorial Day, uh, Father's Day business being yeah. completed already. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, uh, once we get the uh, through these next couple of uh, holidays, say the the uh, Memorial Day and Father's Day and July Fourth, what, what, what do you think we'll see for the, the summer? You see anything uh, different, or do you think it will stay along the seasonal trend? Yeah, I think we'll find a bottom in here over the next uh, three four weeks and trade sideways into the summer. Okay, so um, you know, it looks like the, your market's reacting as as expected along a seasonal uh, trend, and and uh, we certainly appreciate those comments. And um, and uh, thanks again, Dwayne. You bet, you, Bruce. Thanks, guys. In the boneless market, trade activity has been fairly light to this point. Fresh fifties are rated mostly steady. Limited trade has developed on frozen fifties at steady money. Fresh nineties have been generally quiet thus far. Packers continue to indicate that they are booking additional purchase orders, but have yet to price that meat. Imported beef markets are mostly steady today. Overseas sellers were resisting U.S. bids. Traders say that this is mostly a function of currency, as the Australian dollar has rebounded a bit over the past day. Trading in the FOB market has been light. Many processors are occupied getting their product out to their retail clients and only pick around the edges of the market, as they say they would like to leave larger purchase decisions for next week. Importers are encouraged because their customers are asking for time 
timely delivery of product that has already been purchased. Bullish traders believe that this is an indication of lightly supplied pipelines, which will result in selling opportunities following the holiday. Looking at pork, cash hog bids are expected to remain weak, but some support could be seen from interest for next week deliveries. As a result, both interior market hogs and terminal hogs are called steady to a dollar lower. Tight availability has limited trading in the green meat markets, but could help to prop up price levels. Hams are called steady to possibly firmer, bellies are mostly flat, trimmings are the least available and rated firm. Availability of loin products varies widely, however, the abundance of disinterested buyers is expected to lead to some still weaker sales. Butts and sparibs have become abundantly supplied, and both complexes are rated weak. Buyers will wait until the holiday weekend sales are tabulated before committing to additional quantities. Now with a look at the GDP, here's Matt Shivers. Thanks, Jill. Real gross domestic increase at an annual rate of 3% in the first quarter of 2010 from the fourth quarter, which had increased 5.6%. The increase in real GDP in the first quarter primarily reflected positive contributions from personal spending, private investments, exports, and non-residential fixed investments. This second estimate of the first quarter increase in the real GDP is 0.2 percentage lower than the advanced estimate issued last month. Thank you, Matt. That is your Ernerberry Mid-Morning Tone brought to you on Comtel by Travis Meats, celebrating 75 years of beef processing for national chains as well as institutional distribution. Trust Travis Meats to be your custom formulation solution.